it should come as no surprise that nurses are busy when we're at work or even when we're not at work, we're busy. So it doesn't make any sense to think that a nurse would have time to just go spend hours at work or out of work looking in databases to find all of the research about a specific topic. You know, unless that's your job, you don't have time to do that, nor do you probably really want to spend hours and hours in research databases looking for the latest and greatest in scientific evidence. So wouldn't it be nice if there were people out there who did exactly what I was talking about, who actually went through and found all of the research evidence on a specific topic and they summarized it for you? That's what this presentation is about. That does exist. And so thankfully, the busy nurses don't have to go do all those web searches. You really can look at pre-appraised evidence sources. So there's two really main types of pre-appraised sources that you see on the slide. First of all, systematic reviews, which are kind of the creme de la creme of pre-appraised evidence. But then there's also this other thing called clinical practice guidelines or care bundles. And you've probably heard of those care bundles more so than you've probably heard of systematic reviews. Um, you'll see on systematic reviews that there are two types, and that depends on whether it's mostly looking at quantitative or qualitative research. So meta-analyses look at quantitative studies, and metasynthesis or metasyntheses look at qualitative studies. The, the gist of all of this is that a team of experts has combed through the research literature out there, has read it, has critiqued it as to whether it's as strong or not, and then they have provided you with the answer to whatever the question was that they were looking at. So let's look at some examples. First of all, this is a meta-analysis. It's a specific type of systematic review that looks at quantitative studies, and it combines all of those quantitative studies about one topic together to give you the evidence. And it actually does this in a statistical way so that it actually is doing a totally different study. So for instance, what you see on your screen is a meta-analysis. They looked at different studies that provided interventions, dietary interventions during pregnancy to help it with the outcome of prevention of gestational diabetes. And so you can see that they looked for a whole bunch of different studies so to see what they could find. And they actually included 11 different randomized control trials experiments that had total aggregated sample of almost 3,000 women across all 11 of those studies. And all 11 of those studies were looking at dietary intervention during pregnancy. So rather than looking at one little bitty study, if we combine all 11 of them together that were aimed to, aim to do the same thing, then that's a really strong source of evidence. So instead of one randomized control trial, we're really looking at the results of 11 and compiling them all together statistically to give us the answer. Does the intervention work or does it not work? So that's a really good evidence source. It's much better than looking at just one study. So anytime you find a systematic review, specifically a meta-analysis, you know you're going to have some good, strong evidence with which to guide your practice. Um, this is an example of a metasynthesis, which is the same concept, just with qualitative studies. So the example on the slide was actually looking at several different qualitative studies with a focus of studying children and adolescents and how they experience body image changes during their cancer diagnosis. And so here, they were looking at any kind of study that used qualitative methods to investigate this, okay? So they actually found studies in using these databases, and then they were able to combine them or synthesize them together to tell us what all of those studies said about children and adolescents' body experiences. This is an example of a clinical practice guideline. Note that it looks much different. Systematic reviews are journal articles. Therefore, they're usually very scientific. They're usually quite long. So if you read a systematic review, it might be 60 pages. Some of them are even closer to 100 pages. They're chock full of evidence. So there's no lacking in knowing what the science says. However, 
for busy nurses, we don't necessarily have time to read 100 pages. So clinical practice guidelines are your friend because clinical practice guidelines are meant for exactly what they sound to guide clinical practice. Therefore, they're kind of like Cliff's Notes, if you will. They give you specific recommendations written in simple, plain language that are easy to read and understand. So this is a clinical practice guideline from the World Health Organization, and it's telling you how to prevent and treat postpartum hemorrhage, okay? And then they also give you a little heads up, hey, the CNO, even though we have all these recommendations, they're not all the best recommendations. So we're gonna tell you what kind of uh, strength of this, this study was and how strong we feel that this recommendation should be followed in practice. So the first one, they talked about the use of uterine tonics like um, oxytocin is for the prevention of postpartum hemorrhage is okay during the third stage of labor. They strongly recommend that and they say that there's moderate quality evidence from the studies that they reviewed that support that recommendation. Okay. They actually tell you how much oxytocin they, they recommend that you use, and they have several other things specific to um, oxytocin and monitoring of that. And then on this last slide, I have some other guidelines, and I put this one on here because look at number five. Oh, it's a weak recommendation. Now, granted, it's weak, but it comes from high-quality evidence. So that probably means that there was one really strong study that said this was good, but because it came from only one study and there weren't other studies to back this up and lend more support to it, then they probably couldn't give it a strong recommendation. So as a practitioner, a nurse, you need to know whether it's a strong or a weak um, recommendation. Obviously strong recommendations, the science is there. Okay, so that's probably something we need to be implementing into our policies and procedures in our workplaces. Things that are weak, you have to use a judgment call. And obviously not just one nurse should be doing this. If you're doing an evidence-based practice change in your workplace, it's team driven. So the team is gonna look over these recommendations with their own expertise and knowing the limitations they have in their workplace money, workplace, um, staffing, technology, to decide what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. But these pre-appraised evidence pieces are great because someone's done the work for, for you, someone with a lot more experience and intellect with this than I have. So they know what they're doing and they have given you basically cliff notes and said, hey, this is what you should be doing based on our re review of the scientific literature. So hopefully, through the assignments this week, you'll really get a good taste of what clinical practice guidelines look like and how you can use them in your own practice.